No, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to freaking send it. Why? Because we've got some very special guests, plural, in the house today. We have Mr. Tomas Saran from Effortless Hire. I, we know that. Where are you from? From? <laughs> I uh, was born in Israel. Moved to the states when I was four. Yeah, and came from the East Coast. Been in Austin for about five years. So. Heck yeah, yeah, and uh, clearly fit the mold of the Austin elite, which is why you're on this podcast. And we also have the one and only, lovely, wonderful KB Kaylee. What's up? How's Thank everyone you. doing? Happy Thursday. It is Thursday. It is Thursday. It's great to be here, Toma. Good to see I'm you, great. Caleb. Thanks so much for coming by. No problem. It's been a while since we've seen you It on the has show. been a while, and it's so exciting to meet Toma again. Seeing as uh, I hit him up on Instagram maybe a year ago and we became friends. We stalked him a bit. Shout out to his treats, too. <laughs> so, time you introduced us, uh, me to Greg, actually, originally. Oh, so, no, you came to the dinner, and that's... We sat next to each other. You guys just hit it off. And since then, we played golf together. And we recorded a podcast before this. It just didn't work for some reason. Any much remove. No. Well, anyways, let's freaking get this momentum going, shall we? Come on, yeah. let's put a little turbo boost in the gas pedal. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go wah, wah. Let me hear you go wah, wah. Come on now. <laughs> All right. Tell me, we're going to highlight what you're doing right now in the industry. Okay. Effortless hire. Um, you're you're making waves, not just in Austin, but at least in interstate platform with your clients. Talk to us about that. Right. You're here. We call you elite. Let's elaborate. Sure. So mm. the core of it of what we basically do is we're offshore virtual staffing. Right. right. So we tend to focus on operation stuff because most of the clients that we end up working with, they may have like sales or marketing goals. But when we ask them why they aren't working on those, they generally, well, I'm so busy with X, Y, Z. Those are generally the red flags that we see as green flags for us, where we go, great, let's clear that operational issue for you. Usually it's fulfillment or something else on the back end, and then we'll move on to the other pieces. And we do that by placing in VAs, virtual assistants, from the Philippines and from Latin America. It's about 50-50. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we've had a lot of fantastic growth and a lot of fun, and I thoroughly enjoy getting to know each of our customers and, and clients and basically helping solve problems and then actually implementing someone to take care of those. Yeah, but Tomer, what makes you such a enthusiast for solving problems? Have you always been like this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it started, I, w I was a structural engineer initially mm -hmm. where I used to design skyscrapers in New York. Yeah. Uh, so I was all numbers and spreadsheets and hard hats and steel toe boots. And then switched over to entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship is just great. How many problems can you solve today? Thanks. Essentially every single day. And after 10 years of that with having VA staff, I was like, okay, cool. What, how can I use this engine that I built to help other people out? Also enough people were asking me to help them already. So I was like, okay, I believe that I should probably start making this into an actual service, but yeah, always solving problems. Uh, it's always something to, it's actually an exercise that I have to do at home, which is when uh, I hear the problem is to ask, am I in problem solving mode or am I just listening? Because that is a, mm. maybe that's just a guy thing. Uh, or maybe that's just a, being with a partner thing, but I immediately jump into that. Oh, so having oh. to hit the pause button. Was there? That's in the men are from Mars, woman now from Venus book. And it actually states, please don't try and solve my problems today. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I catch myself trying to solve problems sometimes. And you just need someone to listen and maybe hold you or comfort you. But I remember when we first dealt with one another, you were fantastic. We sat there and you really listened to all my problems. And do you remember, that was incredible. Like, just at the right time when I really needed someone. Amazing. Super helpful. We implemented a VA. We, you helped me with some reels for my social media. Super yeah, cool. 
we had a slightly different model at the time, but the core element of digging in and figuring out what the core issues are was not, it has been the through line in, in general. Yeah. Yeah. You made some from the beginning of that till, till now such drastic uh, <laughs> pivots and different differences, but fantastically I'm happy to have been a sounding board and a place to bounce some interesting ideas off of you. Yeah, it's super helpful. And it's even more helpful that you sell. You're a entrepreneur that sells private label products. Uh, really cool product, actually. But it almost means you can understand probably most of your customers' world a bit more. Yeah, so uh, my through line was that I... When I switched from engineering into entrepreneurship, I focused on the e-commerce space mm -hmm. and initially was tried some private label, switched to the wholesale model, which is basically just buying from existing brands and selling retail on Amazon. And then we did our own Kickstarter about two years ago for our own product line called the Secret Whiteboard, which is a full invention, which is fun. And that went very well. And we're relaunching that with the, the V2 next year. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, I, I have all those years of problems solving within e-commerce, which is a rather complicated world to deal with. Just inventory, supply chain, branding, marketing, everything that you can think of is kind of in there. By contrast, this is a slightly simpler business uh, of staffing, which I like. You know, there's something that's just been about to erupt in me that I've been thinking about, needing to say, needing to get this off my chest past five minutes. Tomer, you created this whiteboard that's now turned into a picture. Yeah. And you can't even recognize it's a whiteboard, right? See, that's genius, okay? And here you are, business number two, if not three, four, who knows what number of business it is, but you're rocking it right now. It's like everything you touch turns to gold. Not many people are like that. So let me ask you, have you always been like this? Have you always been just, just knocking life out of the park? Or did it, did it take you a lot of uh, trials and tribulations to get to where you're at today? I think the core of the ideas that I've had have been good. I think the big thing that has improved over time as general has been the execution yeah. as well as the models around them. I think when you first start, you're just trying to learn how to do business air quotes man and then you run into you run into the bumpers here and there and i think the best thing that anyone can do is really set up some guardrails and try things in a safer lower risk environment whenever possible to get their feet under them uh to answer your question no everything hasn't always been <laughs> no. sparkles and gold there's entrepreneurship is filled constantly with what am I going to do next? And the core of it is being able to identify those problems as clearly as possible so that you can propose remedies. But nowadays I'm much more aware of what I don't know than what I think I know. Uh, so mm -hmm. what I, I'm aware of what I think I know and I'm aware of that it is probably wrong if I'm going into something new. And so I will usually seek out someone who's done it before and talk to them, pay them for their time, whatever it is, because I know it's going to save me significant headache in the future. And I think that's a, that's a big thing that I generally look for um, whenever someone is about to start something new. Yeah, tell me, you, you've got to admit that you've got, you've got this way of thinking about things that's unique to most people. I'll take the compliment, I suppose. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't be how, bashful. How do you feel? Do you feel like that you think about things differently? Than the masses? Yeah. yeah. Than me? Than you? We probably have a lot of alignment with the way we do I think you're things. both quite operational and structured with logic, which yeah. is the engineer in you, and you're basically the same. It takes a certain type of personality. And then what I think is the best part about all this is that, you know, you're not just an idea maker. You're an action. You're an action taker. That's a muscle. That's a muscle that needs to be exercised. And where the heck does it come from, though? I, look, I know you're in a romantic relationship, and sometimes that can drive you to do some great things and sometimes some crazy things. Who knows what it is? But, it's true. You know, what, what's driving you to, to take all this action in your life? 
I'd say a need for independence and some dumb thing to prove yourself, I'm sure, is is latent in there if we have to dig into it. But realistically, it's also fun. Like it, you got to enjoy the journey. It's like a game. Of course it's a game. Yeah, this is, all of this is essentially a game. There are some real stakes to it, which yeah. makes it a more interesting game. Yeah. But if you do look at it that way and say, cool, who can I get on my team? That makes it a little bit easier. A lot of a lot of entrepreneurs love the like solo grind of it. But I think, and even though I don't have necessarily partners in most of my businesses, I still bring on talent or seek it out in order to facilitate that. Um, I think if you, if you don't try, you won't even know if you like it or not. Right. A lot of, at the end of the day, right. Business and at a certain scale becomes kind of the same thing, right? You have department heads and you're dictating to them what, what you want them to do. So what is the path along that, that is alignment with you for industry, for product type or service type that aligns with what you've like. And for me, it actually, it took a few iterations for me to find that here, Mm. right? With, uh, (laughs) Kaylee knows, uh, a lot about Amazon has met a lot of Amazon sellers, for example, who were probably in that wholesale model and they're cold calling all day, trying to get wholesale accounts with different brands. And she's heard how many no's they get and how frustrating that can be. I used to think I hated sales, right? But now in being in this industry where I have something that I really feel passionate about helping people with, I enjoy it so much and it's a completely different world. So it's that alignment of who do you want to be talking to about what, right? Who do you want to be surrounding yourself with? And I'm like, I like talking to business owners and being like, let's get into it. What you got? What's under the hood? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Oh, I know who to connect you with, right? 90% 90% of the time, it's you two, which is great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. So if there's somebody that you want to be known as by the world, we're going to begin the sentence with this. Tomer Soran, the guy that does... Mm. Keep it business related. The guy who has the resources you need. The guy that has the resources. Yeah. What I've enjoyed about building this virtual assistant staffing agency is it is both it's fueling that connection point because I get to meet different successful business owners and go, Hey, you two should talk, which is also nice. I get to learn more about different people's businesses behind under, under the hood from a sort of consultative manner, which allows me to have better insights into businesses. And so I can more accurately it it folds on itself to where i can more accurately diagnose issues or blind spots and then bring some people in and then by being the person to bring talent in to fill those gaps yeah i also get to meet all this talent and essentially build my own dream team internally Mm. like i have a fantastic engine where i'm oh you're awesome maybe i'll just keep you for our team and that happens sometimes uh and it's worth having that because i get to i get to build a stronger and stronger business that that keeps like a samurai sword folding in on itself and becoming a more beautiful damascus more forged yes nice word damascus love it because it's got the word mask like it's a mask this sounds really like that masculine energy. yeah yeah that a girl so so what other podcasts have you guys done together? <laughs> oh, we've had some. Uh, we haven't done many. Just three or four. Right? We did last ask Courtney and Chris. Courtney and Chris. Yeah. Zachariah. Ara and Zachariah. And then one with Ronnie Landis. Do you know him? He sounds familiar. He does body work. Okay. You might benefit from some of your services. <laughs> and then who's the other? Uh, Dar- Darius. Oh, Darius. Yeah, that was wild. Have you met Darius? You have, right? I believe so. Yeah. I think at, at one of your uh, events. One of Ben. The birthday party. Yes. You met Darius with the glasses. Who was there? Birthday party? Yeah. Whose birthday party? Ben's. 
if anyone out there has a chance, go to these guys' parties. They throw fantastic events with really quality people. Yeah, yeah. I always meet someone fun and interesting and make a friend. I'm very grateful. My The person that brings it all back is J.P. Newman, the billionaire real estate guy in Austin. But heart, soul, body, spirit, mind, you name it, he is the best person in Austin. And every single one of those people come through him, from him. Ben, Darius, and there's a whole list more. You got to meet him one day. Fantastic. Yeah, but enough about all this other people. We got to talk about you, all right? This is your show. <laughs> so let me ask you this. What's something that you are an expert at that you can teach the audience today? One small tidbit of what you're an expert at. Because obviously you can't teach them everything. That's, that would take years. I think what I might be the most beneficial, you know, I'd love to actually better understand who are who are we talking to? You know, who... We're talking to entrepreneurs, business people in Austin. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I'll say regardless of whether you have a, a BA or, or any other teammate or you're working or even with your partner, one of the skills that I've been, that I have been forced to coach both uh, the VAs and the clients is about generally communication. That ends up being where we really focus a lot of our like first 90 days attention on yeah is getting alignment and a couple of the core tools that one of the core tools is like echoing imperative and for some reason it's something that we i realize that as we've progressed a lot of our training needs to be built up into just how to people instead of just how to business mm. and it's one of those is parroting and echoing so when you are working with a teammate a lot of people have this issue where they hear the their teammate will go, yeah, got it. And you'll look at that person and go, I don't know if I don't trust your answer. I don't know if it'll get done. I don't know what's going to happen when you do that. It And then a week later it comes back and it's a completely incorrect result. Right. It's like when it, and a week later it comes back and it's completely incorrect result. Right. So when you, one of the things that I, I focus on is. Was that parroting? Somewhat. So what I was referring to is when you echo back the uh, your understanding in your in your own words of what the person actually wanted or their goals. Mm. Right. So. It, oh, it, can I take a stab at this? Please. All right. What I'm hearing you say to me is that it's imperative for somebody to repeat back in their own language to the person that sent the message what they interpreted the message to be to make sure everybody's on the same line. Exactly. A lot of people are afraid to do that when they when they start. And it seems obvious when you say, but a lot of people just don't take that exercise or force their employee or teammate to actually do it and go, okay, tell me what you think that I meant. Okay, that's wrong. And that's good that you told me. So now we can get on the same page. That's wrong. It's important. It's, yeah. it's important to encourage being incorrect yeah. in there that it's safe to do so. And I think a lot of people are scared to get it wrong in that way. Mm. And then they just make their boss or teammate or colleague angry later with the result. So encouraging a place of like, I don't care whether you like get it wrong, didn't, don't understand, just try. And we'll get in alignment. Let's let's start here and then we'll find our way. Because most of the time it's vocabulary, mm. right? Oh, I was saying something in a way that you haven't heard it before. So you didn't understand it that way. It's... That ends up being a lot of a lot of where we end up coaching. So no matter who you're working with, it's an exercise that I encourage. Uh, Tomac, I gotta ask, how does this play a role in your marriage? Big, big, very. You that exercise works very well with everything of, and I think Kaylee is the emotional uh, genius in the room. I think <laughs> I would ask you if that resonates, meaning the the what i'm here the way you said that phrase that was fantastic greg of what i'm hearing you say is this and then they can go no you don't get it this is what i'm saying I got it now it totally helps honestly yeah that's a good communication is everything and people i think they just make assumptions or you think someone understands but 
you don't listen, right? And it's all about listening, letting the person feel heard and talk it calmly through so both of you are in a safe space. And I think you did that really well when when I first worked with you because it's like, it, it was almost like I was being, I was speaking to a counselor. You just helped me feel like, wow, this is actually manageable. This is not that difficult. I just needed to talk it through and to have it documented in a way that I can take action. Yeah. That's probably the second thing that I would, I would uh, go into in terms of tips is documenting conversations and then using that documentation to get further alignment. I use two tools for that. One is Fathom. A Fathom, yeah, an AI, an AI recorder Yeah, uh, that we just use the transcripts and you throw it into ChatGPT and you ask it questions about it. Oh, wow, you put it back into ChatGPT? Yes. Oh, wow. So, for example, if we were, uh, let's say we took the transcript from this, I might plug it in and go, great, what are the, what are the main tips that came out from XYZ? And I'll use that to process it. Or I might ask other types of questions. But you, doing that is one. The other tool I often use now is Loom with its AI is quite good. Mm. Um, where you simply just record yourself working and narrate and get into the habit of speaking out loud your thought process and why. Mm. Particularly the why. And it will automatically pump out an, an SOP bit from it. That's yeah. Incredible technology. So Loom, that's where you send a recording to someone else. So, yeah, Loom is basically like if you were to if we were on a call and you screen shared and were walking me through yeah. stuff, it's like that, but you're just doing it by yourself. Oh, so you're a little video myself. in the corner, you're recording it. It's a way to do asynchronous communication. Wow. And so we use that a lot uh, to have the team document what they're doing, or myself to. Say, okay, this is how I'm going to do this. And then I hand it off to a teammate. They build the SOP, put it into our playbook. And then it's recorded. Cool. It's fun. Dude. Yeah. So you're really diving into the AI space, no doubt about it. I, I definitely use those tools every single day. Dang. Absolutely. Anyone not on AI right now is missing out. This, it goes very deep. Do you want a biscuit? But, uh... I'm okay. Thank you. You don't want a biscuit? Oh, the moment. You ever hear that song on YouTube? And it tastes the biscuit, tastes the biscuit with that honey sauce. Taste Is this an ad that you're receiving? Yeah. No, taste the biscuit. I think it's the worst song I've ever heard. <laughs> Don't put your sauce on me. You know what I'm talking about? Not yet, but he really loves it. I'm sure everyone's going to be running to YouTube to hear the jam. Oh, it's fine. It's got millions of views. <laughs> I bet. It's one of those sleepers. Yeah. You'll thank me later. I'll send it to you. What YouTube rabbit holes do you guys go down lately? I mainly just watch podcasts. The, Which, what, uh, in your world? Or in, uh, recently, I've been listening to all of J.P. Newman's podcasts because I'm trying to see how I can understand commercial real estate more. So I think there's quite a big opportunity in that space, but I don't really understand it. So, yeah, that's all. What about you? Cheers to that. For me, bodybuilders. Bodybuilders that got YouTube beef with one another. I like watching Greg Doucette put people in their place. Yeah. I love it. I don't want. Hey, whatever entertains you. Just like real talk, you know, when people just speak their unbiased opinions about stuff. It's kind of a relaxing. It's like podcasts are good, too, to listen to. What? I think that's why podcasts are good to listen to also. Because they're, they're just, it's like connecting with a human without having to talk to them. Listening to them speak like that. I definitely use it as a. I definitely use podcasts as an educational tool. Like, well, well, I like what you're doing there, Kaylee, in terms of I'll use it as a way to spend time with people and start learning the vocabulary and and the the sort of mindsets around it because I feel like it's easier to speak in that world mm-hmm. after the fact. It's kind of the, you know, they say that the, the quote of, oh, you're the average of the people you spend time with sitting in the same room as someone and listening to their conversations is to a certain extent spending time with them yeah 100 percent. and so that's kind of when i do want to enthrall myself in a in a subject matter whatever it might be at the moment is uh definitely the way i do that yeah i think it's really powerful and it also gives you ways to 
connect the dots because they're obviously interviewing people and you meet them. It's, it's just, it keeps it flowing, you know? Do you take notes when you're listening? No, not really. I just uh, have a really good memory. So sometimes it depends what. You have a good memory. Yeah, quite a good memory. Yeah. When, actually, when it's to do with connecting, because that's my. I should stick. It's my love language. We should actual people. A podcast. That's all I do. Even in my sleep, I'm connecting people. It's crazy. It's true. You have quite a, a large network. Do you keep like a personal CRM or something like that? I have a personal CRM and I'm building in like a AI newsletter to actually start utilizing it more effectively. It's a bit of a mess. So, I mean, <laughs> it's a process. I, I, I or two to help, but that's fair. <laughs> One thing yeah. that we focused on is definitely not focusing on the like sprint pushes of stuff. Mm -hmm. So for example, setting up a CRM is something I would say is like worth a specialist focusing on. And for that, I'll usually just refer to a specialist. Mm -hmm. And then once that is set up and then there's ongoing work, that's when I, fi I feel like a VA is actually a good placement. Yeah, 100%. Because you've got to have some sort of s structure to... It's di there are two different skill sets. Mm -hmm. Building and operating are two different things. And most of the times, the people who like to build do not like to operate. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, I very much enjoy dealing with or, or working with like fractional COOs and operations consultants because they love to build things and then want to walk away. Mm -hmm. And so then that's when they tag us in and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, f we'll fulfill the role after the fact. Got you. Have you ever done any uh, COO training? Just the the brute force of uh, entrepreneurship, but also a few uh, a few mini courses here. They're mostly mostly education that I've read or listened to. Okay. Uh, if you have anything good to refer to or organizations, I would love to. to hear. Yeah, I was actually just in Norway on an Arctic cruise with 180 purpose driven entrepreneurs and a guy called Cam. Harold, Harold was there. He runs the COO Alliance, and he. I've heard of. Yeah, he's written eight books, I think, and absolute master of connections. And wow, his he's got a course. I'll share the details with you. I'll make the introduction. He's also got so many contacts for anything you need. He's the best. That's fantastic. Yeah. What uh, what's changed your life the most, Tomar? One book. I'll give a nonfiction and a fiction. Thank you. The nonfiction back in the day was a four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. I appreciated uh, that sort yeah, of push in the world in the in the work and has come back now very aptly in terms of we're we're outsourcing work and that's a, a large part of that uh, that book. I haven't reread it recently, but there's a lot of the core elements that I think that are still relevant. He may have also updated it uh, for a little bit more modern uh, times. From a fiction perspective, Siddhartha is the book I gift the most. Mm. Uh, and it's by Herman Hess or Hesse. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic book about this guy who is a rich, he's a rich kid who goes off into the woods to become uh, like a monk, essentially. And then goes through his journey towards enlightenment and he meets, he meets Buddha, like meets the Buddha. Yeah. He's just like, no, nah, I'm good. Doesn't like Buddha. Moves on and finds all these teachers. And it's a fantastic, it's a easy, fast read, but there's a lot of depth into it and teaches a lot about there's a lot of paths that you could take. None of them are, are wrong, but focus and enjoy what you can, like live in the moment. It's it's one of those. Now, there's a quote that I remember. I won't, I have not forgotten it since I heard it in a Tim Ferriss's book. It's that there's always a lateral option. That thought crosses my mind nearly every day. Can you elaborate on that? Okay. What does it mean to you? Let's see you. Let's see you run into something, a wall, okay, a problem. Well, 
Um, oh, I want to lose 50 pounds, but I can't run. Okay. Can you walk? Oh, no, sorry. No, I can't walk. Oh, okay. Can you ride a bike? Oh, no, no. Biking really crushes my, my back. Oh, okay. Can you swim? Oh, you know what? I actually can swim. Right. I think a lot of times people um, get, they run into the initial issue and they don't look for the lateral options. They let that initial issue be the thing that stops them. So the process goes as this. Here's the initial challenge. You go directly to the left or the right to find whatever lateral option works and choose to do it and then do it right away. I think that's an incredible way to be extremely efficient and effective. Literally, just you can visualize them. This is not going to work. What about this? Nope. What about this? Nope. What about this? And the faster you go through that process and choose something and take action on it right away, it's like a recipe for efficiency. You asked me earlier about... Always a lateral option. Five. I really like that. You, you asked me earlier about start, uh, my ability to actually do things. Yeah. Right? Action taking. Yeah. Which is along this line. I think a lot of people have sometimes trouble starting or starting another piece of their project because sometimes people get locked in the trying to solve a problem that they haven't even hit yet. So Result oriented, outcome oriented. Somewhat, yeah. I think they focus on a problem that isn't even relevant to the moment. Mm. Necessarily, it's not the constraint of their business. They're like, well, what happens if I have 200 clients and all that stuff. It's like, cool, go get two first, mm -hmm. right. you know, solve, solve the problem in front of you. Yes, you can make some plans. And if this happens, then you can pivot in that direction. But for example, I see people who are obsessed with setting up the perfect CRM and system and all this stuff. And so much tech stack, for example, to build a coaching or consulting project, you really don't need more than calendly in a spreadsheet to do that right go talk to people get them on your calendar send them to strike to pay you and then book a call don't overcomplicate it just get reps right just do it just and get that, reps and with that first client you're going to get immediate feedback and then implement fail forward fail fast right yeah red uh the ready uh fire aim no yep. methodology yep. Mm. Mm. yeah and there's another term that comes to mind it's getting ready to get ready to get ready. Talked about those people that, that spend hours and hours of, of preparing mm. and all for what? A failed execution anyways, right? Yes. More I, likely. I think, I think there's, I was uh, thinking about the difference between, like it's a procrastination and preparing, right? Some, some things are just procrastination, like, oh, I need to do X, Y, Z so I can be in the right vibe to start this thing. Whereas it's, it prep, there is preparation for a meeting, for example, right? Like, okay, researching your person, organizing your notes around that. Those are, those are relevant that will make you more powerful for that piece. Yeah. But trying to identify what makes you more powerful there versus what is a more artificial um, handicap that you're giving yourself of like, oh, I need to have the coffee in this specific way or whatever before, you know, we do it. You, you can... Can you get there and what would what actually increases your leverage the most? And the point of all that is to to check in with yourself. Yeah. To ask yourself those questions. Am I being real? Am I procrastinating? Or am I is this time that used to get ready necessary? Another thing I see is people who have a target and they need a certain amount of output to get to the result, which is a lot of calls, right, to book meetings to then make sales, but they're like stuck on, oh, what's my commission? Can I have more money? Can I have an increase? But they're not actually getting or hitting the target in the first place. There's all these like factors which just, it's like being stuck in your head, which stop you from actually achieving anything. Yeah, I think, for example, kind of back to the, let's say consulting or, or some other project like that a lot of people are afraid to lose money on a sale that they don't even have right and it's or you know give somebody a referral thanks for something and you wouldn't have had that sale at all if it wasn't for those people right and worrying about the problem 
that they don't. You know, we talk a lot about this podcast about what the actual answers are to success. And I think presence is an underrated topic because, you know, you've heard a bunch of times that we need to focus on the process, right? I think a lot of these books talk about what to do, right? Um, what actions you should take. What they fail to talk about is how to exist, how to be, uh, and how, more specifically how to be present and focus on the process, focus on exactly what's in front of you at all times. Are there any hooks or tools that you use to do that for yourself? Yeah, I think about, I ask myself this question, how small can I get to live the biggest life? Because the success of our business and our lives is embedded, embedded in the most minute details. For example. Is that the how you do one thing is how you do everything? Mm, or just, I've heard that. I've heard Jesse Itzler say that, and I don't agree with it. Okay. So you're talking I, about something else. I don't want to. What be, are you talking about? I can be good at real estate. I don't want to be the best house painter. You know what I'm saying? If I try to paint my, I don't want to be the best house painter. I can't. No, I think that's something. I think we're referring to something else. Meaning like how you send one email to 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 somebody is how you run your business like the what you do in your minutia of mm. things how you make your bed is how you live your life that kind of like the the smaller details of your life are are resonant of the larger ones maybe yeah yeah exactly and and focusing on the process of getting all those details done properly which goes to the next principle it never gets old quality over quantity when you're focused on the process, when you're present, when you're thinking about exactly what needs to be done right here, right now, you're going to get the quality that you need. And then the quality is going to attract what you want because you have a good product. With a good product, it brings the client. So process and mindset. Yeah, let me elaborate a little bit more, right? What's one thing that you have to do um, to run your business every every day? Does it host, do you host meetings with your team? Yeah, so I, I will respond to my team on the questions and give them direction on what I need. Is it a skill to run a meeting? Absolutely. It's a skill. It's a skill that I train both. I, I train VAs and, and clients on. See, that's cool, right? So you get to ask yourself, how well can I run this meeting right here, right now? What nuances do I need to be aware of? Do I need to make sure everybody's paying attention? Are my delivery Is my delivery engaging, entertaining, energetic? Then you're producing the best quality product that you possibly can because that's what you're mindful of at the moment. It's like your high senses are heightened and you're not thinking. It's pretty good. My theory. I, had, I enjoy trying to focus on the moment only also because we talked about, yes, this is fun, right? Like if you just, if, if you go to the, the, the show just to hear the final symbol, you're missing the show. Yeah. Right. So how can you enjoy that? Right. Yeah. What, what are you, what are either of you working on these days from maybe a mindset or a specific tangible thing that maybe we can get into that could be a good experimental, like, let's dig in, see what's up. I'm working on a few things. So in, in order to get my visa, I have to take my events business and for the last three years showcase that as a proposal that I will be setting events up in the US as well as growing additional revenue for how I consult with marketing services. And so we've just built a new service, just signed a client um, doing marketing retention plus inserts for e-commerce sellers. And then on top of that, it's running events. So we, we're running a mastermind in Thailand. And then the third thing is um, we've got to invest $100,000 risk-free in a brand new business. So I've recruited um, three experts, one which is a seven-figure brand builder whose specialty is branding and sourcing. The other one is a $500 million entrepreneur who's built that in revenue and had 20 businesses and he's now has sold those but is consulting. The other one is a digital marketing expert with the, one of the top 30 fastest growing digital marketing firms in the US based in Austin. So I've connected these three people and we're building a brand in a new category. One of them is quite saturated, but in the other part of it, it's not. 
And to manage all of this, and three people in different countries, different time zones, who are all super busy, plus the uncertainty of a visa, it is very interesting. That's a lot of balls in the air. <laughs> so to keep your head out of thinking and to try and remember, it's about enjoying the process. It's all a game. You know, it's so easy to say that, but then to actually do it. And when it's you, and there's lots of people I know who could very happily probably support me, but sometimes you suffer alone because you just can't help it. You know, do you feel like there's someone who asks you the hard questions? Hmm. Define what a hard question would be. Do you need to do all these things? For this particular visa, I do. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the investment visa, I mean, I could, I could take the easy route and probably jump the fence in Mexico or. Not quite what I was referring to. <laughs> what I meant is more. The concepts of split focus, mm -hmm. right? Being able to each of those, and, and maybe I, there's just a, uh, an understanding of whether or not there are, and I apologize, first of all, I didn't ask. Is it okay if I, if I dig into that a little bit? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so I, I find it's not, it's not healthy for me to, to, to dig in or dissect or give advice on things that I haven't get, gotten consent on. Yeah, that's a good thing to remember. Just like giving feedback to someone. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to ask, am I okay to do this? Yeah. Some people don't want that. I don't want to try it. What? That's a bad Is that? Is that <laughs> no, he was making, he was poking a joke at you. Uh, the question I'm asking is the, the concept of split focus, right? It can take full energy to make one project succeed, mm -hmm. right? Over a course of time. And I guess, it sounds like there's multiple projects, but maybe there's a misunderstanding there. And that's the one of the questions. Could one of those projects fulfill the needs that you have if you if that if just that one project succeeded? Most likely, yes. I think and that's kind of the beauty of it and being the connector is I kind of don't need to get too sort of kind of uh, what would you say bogged down with all the nitty gritty of each of those businesses because like at this point there's a skill for each part of what's been created and I'm sort of project managing and and you know kind of orchestrating like I'm in an uh what are those people called orchestra. a conductor and it's sort of you know if they say one in two startups fail you know there is a there is a chance that one could work and one could not, but the risk is lesser if if there's all this on the table. Or this is the hard question, if it's okay that I ask. Is the risk higher because you because there isn't as much focus on one? That could be too. If um, that makes sense. Yes. That uh, it's a question that I ask myself almost every day because there's a lot of shiny objects walking. Yeah, and you have multiple businesses, right? Correct. So it's like, how do you do it all? So Allocating time, yeah. And one of one of those things has been to direct attention to the right places and also putting the right people in place. I yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. And this is certainly something I'm learning, and um, it's it's been tough. I'm not gonna lie. It's like grounding, sort of. <laughs> There's that feeling of that I've asked people that question before where they're their clients and they're coming in because of that and if and sometimes they i go okay now imagine that you you got rid of this mm -hmm. and then you see their shoulders relax and they like lean back and i'm like how's that feel it's like really good maybe you should do that you know it might allow you to go imagine if you got rid of that and all you had to do is focus on this one thing that you're awesome at in this business and then you, your entire attention was on it, and you go, mm, sounds mm -hmm. delicious. Yeah. Like that ice cream that you had. Yeah. Mm. Pretty delicious to me. But I don't want to dig too deep anymore. That's no, and it's good. I appreciate you guys letting me voice 
this because it's it's a maze and um the u.s just make it difficult for people to come into the country if even if you work for another company it's it's a little bit tough um and i like the challenge so my question is how can we make it as easy as possible for you that's usually the question that that's the like the leading driving question that i have internally with anybody who comes in in the door how can we make it as easy as possible for you definitely what if you didn't have to do that that's the you know whatever not not your situation specifically but that's the general question Mm -hmm. right that's the purpose of placing someone into that a role is what if you that was not your responsibility or maybe you had to give them some advice or whatever and you could give them insight into your goal but basically if you had to if you place somebody in to do the fulfillment what if you didn't have to fulfill all your things yeah or or answer every email or message that comes into your yeah yes it's a form of delegation which i think is the only way you can ever manage all of this stuff you know you can't do it all we delegate every day yeah every time you go into a restaurant you've delegated someone else to cook your food yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah thank goodness for instacart i've saved over 100 hours at the grocery store so far amazing thank you what are you working on these days greg excuse me what what what's keep what's occupying your mind in terms of oh. things that you're trying to solve or get into like what where in your in your world is there uh opportunity for growth or uh or what you feel like is maybe a, a blockage that we can dig into a little bit that you feel comfortable talking about first. Mm. Uh, yeah. How do I say this? Cause I know what it feels like. You can say it wrong and we can find the right words for it afterwards. You know, I'm, I'm actually afraid of the future a lot of time from a general perspective or from a business perspective. No, uh, interpersonal perspective. Yeah. I'm afraid of the future because it's like uh, this this pattern has happened a few times in my life where where things have gotten good and then good and then you know of course when they go down there's still some good around but it's hard to see that because kind of knocked off your horse a little bit so have you identified any time like the inflection points of those things? Yeah, of course. It's very easy to do that. And have you felt like there have been actions that you've taken that influence those inflection points? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like they're something that might be adjustable? Is this something that you you had a decision point on it? Or was it a reaction? Out of my control kind of stuff. Out Out of your control? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so what? Ha- what? Here's the challenge. I think it has to do with vulnerability. Sure. Yeah, I think it's made me too a little too calloused. It's made you callous. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's made me a little too callous. Uh, afraid to be vulnerable. Um. And uh. Yeah, man. I don't know why. That's interesting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Without digging in deeper, it's kind of tough to obviously like give give specific uh i feel like i'm on dr phil so the way that we were talking about this is kind of how i talk to people about business and we could talk if we we could jump in there as well Mm -hmm. if that's something you feel comfortable with it might be more easy to for me to to give it might be easier for for us to talk about on a recorded medium Um, potentially okay as a as a thought expert or we can just jump into something else entirely no you you you're on to something by the way I got a call in 10 minutes, so if I got to hop off, you can uh, wrap up for us. And then let's utilize this next 10 minutes to see what you got going on here. Yeah. yeah. What, where do you feel like, let's talk about, where do you feel like you're spending the most time in your business that you don't think you should be spending? Oh, in business? That's great. Uh, mm. Has to do with listing. Uh, contract to close coordination. Contract to close. So once we get a contract in, paperwork, the steps to process all the paperwork, get it in our broker's hands right over there, 
They look through it all. They have all the checks and balances. Boom, they cut the check. I want a smooth process. Who's in, who's in charge of that? I got someone in charge of that right now. Okay. Do they know their process? I, you know, I hire them because I was told that they know the process. And more time goes on, it's come apparent to me that they don't. What I would suggest is these deals are, set, you know, multi-thousand dollar deals, things like that, right? Yeah. And what I would say is I would give them a $30 subscription to Loom with the AI and then just say, today you're recording everything on your screen and you're going to narrate what you do. Hey, a new deal just closed. I want you to record from the moment that that hits your inbox and go boom. And they read out loud. They go, this just came in my door. Now my next steps is this. And they literally just do it out loud. And they narrate the whole thing that will give you very clearly the steps that are there. Mm -hmm. And you can then take that and go, what were the steps that were taken? Okay. Are there unnecessary steps or are there things here that we could clean up and automate? If you just looked at that and you go, well, three of these things could be automated with like a uh, software that we already have, right? Or something like a Zapier, which is a connective tissue between different apps mm. where like you, if you, you could put, set it so it, like if you put something into this cell on Google Sheets, it automatically triggers something else over here, things like that. Yeah. And you could smooth out some of the process by just getting it documented and but don't worry about the the key things that i recommend about that right one one take it's not about getting it perfect and having it presentation ready it's about just doing it rough and presenting it and if you make a mistake oh actually i have to do this over here oh i just remembered this other thing leave it all in then the second recommendation is to repeat that again meaning have them do it two, three times because they will hear their own pattern mm. and go, oh, well, now, obviously, I do this part because I've already explained it, and that's why. The other thing that will, it, the last thing that will be is it, by verbalizing, it will force you to explain why you do things that are have just been, like, inherently embedded in your psyche of, well, I set up, I put in, I write this email and I say hello and I give the, here's the next steps. And I do that because it's important for somebody to understand what they need to do without having to read all the crap in my email. Oh, that's an interesting point that I wouldn't have thought of doing, of saying out loud, but it's a habit that I have. Mm. I would recommend documenting it. And worst case, you have a cool recording, you can delete it afterwards. There's no harm in it. And for for it doesn't slow them down at all, which is the nice thing. It doesn't cost them anything except some verbal energy. Right. And you'll see exactly whether or not they know what they're doing. I'm doing that. There's no doubt. I'm doing it. Took a note. Good shot. Yeah. Cool. Wow. You are the organizational doctor. You are the systems doctor. We should call yourself that. The systems doctor. I work on some branding stuff. We're about to do a good amount of a deeper branding dive soon. Your wife does that, right? Yes, my wife uh, Blake uh, has Swalltail Studios, and she does these uh, personal branding sprints with people. Yeah, and she has a new cohort coming out soon, and she does fantastic work. And it's a few weeks, and you go through, and she'll walk people through the finding your brand voice, your identity all these things, logo. Then she does help you figure out colors, fonts, logos, and some like templates and stuff. So yeah. you end up leaving with an actual thing that you can utilize. And that the last cohort that I saw that came out of there were five complete, five or no, it was more than that, uh, completely different brands, but they were all gorgeous and very much spoke to those different people. Cause I happen to know a few of them and I was like, Oh, that does, that is you hundred percent. So it's fun. But yeah, she's going to be putting me through the ringer soon. So that'll be exciting. It'll be fun. Yeah. We enjoy collaborating. Bummed I missed the boat party. I was in some country. There'll be some more. Yeah. What was the boat party? We just had a birthday party for, uh, for Blake. Anna. Uh, no, mermaid. Mermaid theme. Um, how old is she? Uh, she is, she turned 29. Perfect. Where, age. Did, you, where did you get real mermaids? Honestly, 
It's amazing we can find on Amazon nowadays. You, did you buy them or rent them? No. Well, it's uh, amazing. Katie, who's a fantastic copywriter, yeah. has uh, just had a perfect, like a real mermaid tail type thing that she slipped on. That was very cool. Absolutely. It's amazing what you'll find in someone's yeah, closet. Yeah. That's one of those things. What's the weirdest thing that you um, could find in your closet to break to a bar? Do you really want to know? Probably, um, that's, uh, that's up to you, my friends. Dog. I have a felt penis. <laughs> that your mom made. And a pair of huge breasts. Yeah. That your mom also made. She she bought them for me. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're back in town. This, 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 this is fun. Uh-huh. So KB, I gotta hop off to my next meet. I, I gotta I, go. Would you, we we all have to go. You think so? Think yeah, so. we're done. We could have kept going. I wanted to keep. I'm gonna link up we tomorrow. Can for another five well, I have a call. I have a contact that I, w- I want to work with you on a deal. Okay. I'll I'll we'll talk about it tomorrow. I'm gonna message you. I made some notes. Yeah, this is a good podcast. This for really- oh, Mary. This was better than the first one. It was very different, and I think yeah. I think there's a lot of interesting things here. I, it feels disparate. Like it doesn't there's not necessarily a clear through line as much, or not or like sequential. But I think there's some really interesting pockets. Here. Yeah, yeah. Nico's gonna have a blast chopping and screwing this. Oh, he chops it up to get the the golden nuggets because there's a lot of cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll send That's you some quick samples. They look good. Cool. So yeah. They're gonna make you look like even more of a pro. You're really already a pro. So it's like whoa, double dose. Fine. This is excellent, Greg. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, uh, Tomer. If you need to reach me, check out Effortless Hire mm. and. We're here in Austin, so if you want to say hey in person, come do so. And if you find yourself open and available on uh, Thursdays in the morning, we go to Butler Pitch and Putt for business and birdies at 8 a.m. So you can do a round, play some golf, talk some shop, and still make your calls. It's a fun just way to get some steps in in the morning. And it makes it makes Thursday feel like a weekend work day, which is really cool. That's That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Every Thursday. Every Thursday morning. Liked it. Folks, you here to hear first, Mr. Tomer Saran. Thanks so much for coming on, Miss KB Kaylee Bendel. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate you so much. Appreciate. Y'all stay fired up. Till next time. Cheers.